Hello YouTube, uh, this is Charles. Today I have this laptop, it's Asus. Uh, it has a very weird issue when you plug in the charger. It automatically goes on and makes this light freaker. Can you see? These lights go on and off immediately without pressing the, pressing the power button plus the screen. So today I want to try and fix this one on camera. So I wanted to let you know that I've been trying and working on this motherboard for over 20 minutes. And uh, at first I tried to reset the BIOS by removing the BIOS battery and shooting out those BIOS terminals tried to power it on again and it was still doing the same thing then I went ahead and tried to change the RAM because it had two RAM slots and I had to remove them and put the one that I was sure that was working I tried to power it on again and it was still doing the same thing now as I was measuring some voltage over the motherboard I realized that there was no voltage over the processor power supply so I changed the process in fact I didn't change I just moved it and tried to power it on and see if it could power on and maybe make the fan run so fast because you know when a motherboard doesn't have a, a processor it uh, at times it runs very fast and then stops so the motherboard was still doing the same thing so i went ahead and disassembled it and as i was removing the screen from the housing i saw that in the socket where the screen connects from those connectors were bent i think there was a technician who tried to fix it at first but then as he was pushing, putting back the screen, he bent those screen screen pins inside. You know, those screen socket has got 3 volts, 5 volts and 19 volts. And possibly when some of those pins are shorted to ground, they could also prevent the laptop from booting up. I bent and fixed those terminals and tried again and this motherboard was not working. I again used my power supply. I gave it some current, I connected it on the motherboard and funny enough the power supply wasn't able to detect a shot. The 19 volts I was supplying using my power supply was not dropping down and the current was still low. In fact it was consuming 0.16 milliamps. Basically that could seem like there was no shot on the motherboard. That's when I resorted to the best method. You know, it's hard to believe that when you're fixing a motherboard the best way to detect or to look for uh, to diagnose the motherboard is by inspection and that's when i applied my visa inspection i disassembled the motherboard from the housing i looked all over it and that's when i saw a burnt diode in fact at first i thought it was a transistor yes so that's when i saw it and i was really surprised because it's hard to believe that a power supply could not see a shot and the eyes could see it now after seeing the, that burnt diode, I had to get the schematics from the internet. You know this Asus motherboard that did not have labels on it. So I had to look for the schematics, I had to look for the body view and then I had to follow along. Now this chip that was connected to this diode, is a, it is the chip that controls both the chipset voltage and RAM voltage. Basically such a kind of design was used in these dual core laptops, those that are almost 10 to 15 years ago. So I used the body view and the schematics to, to, to identify the chip, to identify the diode, and then the chip itself that creates 1.5 for the RAM and 1.05 for the chipset was shot. And it was shot in the place that is most likely hard to detect. Yes. That's why I wanted to share with you this process as I was diagnosing this chip and as I was replacing it. It's actually quite a challenging repair and I know you guys if you have such a kind of issue you could actually fix it following this video. So diode D8202 is connected from phase phase 1 
which is connected to the coil of 1.05 I think this is for the chipset and then the phase 2 of 1.5 so this is for RAM so it looks like this chip is the one that co that creates 1.05 for the chipset and 1.5 for RAM now this diode is a uh, input but has capacitors here yeah. and before the capacitors there is a resistor which is 0 ohms that goes to boot 2 and boot 1 so this looks like this chip the section that creates 1.05 for RAM and 1.5 I mean 1 1 for the chipset and 1.5 for RAM they are, they are supplied from outside and I guess it is 5 volts output that shot out to this diode so let's see here it shows that pin 1 and 2 are connected to pin 23 and pin 6 of this chip so let's trace for for those pin Now, one of this line looks like it's short. Let's see which line is that from the body view. So, from the body view. This is pin 1, which is connected to these two resistors. And these resistors are connected to this chip. So let's see from the schematics. Pin 6 is boot 1. And for boot one, she meant to be sure to ground. But why isn't boot two sure to ground? Let's spin 23. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's count six pins on this side and see if it's also sure to ground. And this one is not sure to ground. So there could be an error on this chip. And that's why the other diode was blown because the diode looks is just a power supply it distributes these five volts onto these two section of the chip boot two and boot one so what we are going to do we are going to check out to remove this chip because on pin six does not connect to ground anywhere anywhere <coughs> and this could do actually, but and it's not connected to five volts because the diode is the diode is out, and here this line is connected through a capacitor. So let's take out this chip then you see if we have get rid of the shirt so what I usually do on these chips I usually apply some little lumen solder
to easily take them out. It's out. So let's measure and see if we have a good read of the shot. And it's true. The shirt has been on this chip. So we need to find this chip and replace it here for this motherboard to work. So let me see if I could find any donor board in my motherboards that has got this chip and see if we could replace it today. I'm like I've got this chip from one of my donor board and uh, this is a uh, Samsung by chip actually matches with the one that we are going to replace this is 62227 the same as this one 227CAZ So let's replace it here. So you can see it's soldered very well. So there is no shot here. You remember this was shot on both sides, but this is a power supply. It must, it must not be shot. So let's plug in and we test. You see the fan is spinning. So let me assemble it back and then we can examine it. You see now the light goes, stays on. But before I, fi I fix it back, let me first replace the thermal paste here because this thermal paste looked very, very dry. So let's replace the screen.
All right. So let me put in the charger. And we see. Can you hear the sound? The laptop is on. Wow. So guys, that was the issue with this laptop, eh? And this was the chip that was short that was causing this laptop to come on and off, on and off, on and off. It has been a great fix because we used a body view, we used the schematics to discover this chip and we got it from a donor board and we've been lucky to fix it. So if you have not subscribed, you can subscribe. I always do such kind of repairs and hope to see you in the next video.